Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to day one of NGI 3.0. So just like I want you to have your camera on, I'm going to leave my camera on when I do videos. Um, so it's not ideal, but here we are and we're going to keep moving. So what we're going to do at the end of for this, what we're going to do this week is to actually do our unit assessment for unit one. So before you panic or throw yourself into frying hot oil, it is not a multiple choice test. It's not something that you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't study. It doesn't work that way. It's a writing piece. Now, before you throw yourself out the window because it's a writing piece, please be assured that we're going to walk through this in little chunks. Everybody's going to be successful. So it's really important that you watch the video every day because the video will be tailored to what you have to do for that day. We're going to do this in little chunks and at the end we'll have a full-blown writing piece. So you might be saying, oh, Miss Kaylee, I'm really disappointed because I really thought we were going to watch Stranger Things. Well, that would be a great day for me, but um, we are going to use Stranger Things to show what kind of writing piece we're going to do. So you guys are going to write a recap for Unit 1. And a recap basically kind of looks back over what has happened in a series and brings a new viewer up to speed and reminds an old viewer of the plot line. So let's take a look at a really good recap. Mike, Lucas, Dustin and Will are best buddies who just love Dungeons and Dragons. After a victorious game, Will is on his way home when he's somewhat unexpectedly snatched into an alternate dimension called the Upside Down Okay, so our recap in the first couple of seconds is introduce the main characters so that we know who they are and a primary event that kind of kicks off the plot storyline. Let's see where it goes next. By a creature called the Demogorgon. It doesn't take long for his mother Joyce and his older brother Jonathan to realize he's missing, so they ask slash demand Hawkins' chief of police and lover of quiet mornings, Jim Hopper, to help find him. On the other Okay, so now we have secondary characters and kind of the side plot line of uh, um, the people looking for Will. And finally, it's going Other to Other side of town, a girl is caught picture. stealing food. Her name is Eleven, and she's just the tiniest bit messed up. The guy who finds her rings social services. Big mistake. The woman who turns up at the door is an agent working with the shady Dr. Brenner, the scientist who's been testing Eleven's supernatural abilities. Yeah, she has them. Okay, so... Now, our recap has started kind of at the, bit, at the very beginning of the story. It doesn't tell everything about them. They're already in their uh, teens, right? So there's been things that have happened before that. But they tell you what you need to know to make sense of that particular series. So what you're going to do is tell us what we need to know to make sense of Unit 1. Okay. We're going to do it in small pieces. Um, so, but I, wanna, I want you to take a minute and think about how a recap helps a viewer. What does it do? for someone watching Stranger Things. Tick tock. Give me a second to think about that. All right, now I want you to think about how a recap might help you as a learner or me as a teacher to know that you got the story. Give me a second to think about that. Tick tock. Okay, all right. Let me in now introduce the assignment. Let me show you what you're going to do. And before you are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're writing and I'm writing on my own. We're only doing a piece at a time. And today's piece is pretty short, right? All right. So we talked about television series, but you are going to write a recap for what we're calling colonies, the early years. So you're going to look back at this whole unit and retell the story. But we are going to give you a series of prompts to do that. And we're going to give you the narrator. So you know how the woman was talking on the Stranger Things video? And she was telling that story. The narrator parts were, were part we're going to give you until the very end. So we're going to give you what the narrator is saying to set it up. You're going to fill in the pieces, and the trick's going to be to make sure that you keep your voice correct. So it would be very unusual to go from narrator to I, or narrator to they, or or whatever. You want to make sure that we stay consistent with the narrator's voice. Okay. Uh, a couple of rules of the road. Um, you'll be given some stems, so you'll know exactly what you're supposed to answer in that section. Every time you need to read the narrator's introduction, because it's going to set your mind. It's like, oh, we're talking about this piece. Um, your response will go in the right-hand column right here. And in the very end, we're going to connect all these and make a full writing piece. So you'll have some time to do that as well. Um, you can use any assignment that we have had in the last unit. 
Um, you can use all of your notes. If you need a master copy, there is a link provided in each prompt. So if you can't find your notes and you're like, I can't remember this one, I've, we've given it to you in the link. Um, your responses must be in complete sentences and your work. Don't copy and paste. So don't go to my master and copy and paste my answers over. That will not work. So you need to make sure that you structure your ans answers in check five, meaning it has starts with a capital letter, ends with a period, has a subject, a predicate, and it makes sense. All right, so you need to write complete sentences. Okay, so let's take a look at our first section that we have to write, and let's hear what the narrator has to say. Previously on colonies, the early years. We are starting to see some restlessness in England. Some people were crazy enough to get on a ship, leave everything they know behind, and set sail for North America. What could possibly motivate people to do such a risky thing? Let's find out. Okay, so your prompt is right here. So what were the motivations of the early settlers and why did they come to this new land? So what we wanna do here is fill that in on our site over here. We wanna maintain that narrator perspective. And right now, if you need it, here is the resource that you need. So I recognize that we did that chart on paper and it's been a long time. So if you need it, you can open it here. If you have it, you can get it out. Okay, so here's the chart. If I remember correctly, we talked about Jamestown, Plymouth, Massachusetts Bay, and Roanoke. And we talked about what brought them here. So I see standing out to me, Jamestown was about profit. They were there to send money back. Um, Plymouth definitely was to uh, escape religious persecution, to come here to practice. And then we see Massachusetts Bay, which was still religion, but it was about starting a city centered around the Bible, like a Christian, a Christian town. And the Roanoke was kind of one of these that we still just don't know a lot about. Okay. All right. So I think I have enough to write. So I'm going to write my response here. Okay. I'm going to get creative, right? So they braved the unknown as many of them were escaping religious persecution. Others came to settle and spread the Christian faith. Christian faith. Facing their city on the Bible. Still other brave souls. Would make the journey. Treacherous journey, yeah. Suit of profit. Okay. Now, I think I don't have enough specifics here. So I'm going to refer to them specifically. So escaping religious persecution, religious persecution, like the Puritans who settled at Plymouth. Then I go on to mention Massachusetts Bay. So I'm going to go back here. Okay, it's New England, right? Very conservative, Puritans. I think they're sitting on the Bible. Like Massachusetts Bay. Okay. And I can't spell the name, but that's okay. Still others would make the treacherous journey in pursuit of profit. Okay. So what I need to do now is check my prompt, go back, make sure, and read this to myself to make sure that it makes sense. Did I punctuate? Did, um, do, do my sentences have a subject and a verb? Are there no fragments? Those kinds of things. So I'll give myself a second to read back through, make any changes that I need to make. Okay. 
okay, I feel okay about this. And it's my first one, so I'm going to get a chance to revise it. I'm pretty much done for today. So it's pretty simple today. It's just one. Tomorrow, you will be, do two through four. Thursday, you'll do five through eight. And then Friday, nine through 11. So it sounds like a lot, but we're going to do them in small chunks. So remember, we're going to put this all together at the end to make a cohesive recap. But for now, we're just going to write in pieces. So for today, your work is done. When you're finished with this, hit the submit button and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great day.